Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and today once again I would like to answer a question that some of you have asked in the comment section. Once again a big thank you to everyone who asks questions. Uh, you're more than welcome to do so and if I think I can make a video about it then I will do so. Now today's question is actually about noise abatement procedures and I thought long and hard about how I could explain noise abatement. It's actually quite a complex topic and I decided to split this into two parts. So today we are looking at energy management on departure which may sound very straightforward but actually there's a few things I would really like to go through with you. I think it's important to have a basic knowledge to see what exactly is going on when you take off with a modern airliner before we go into noise abatement. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So here we are sitting on the runway with uh, one of the most beautiful airliners ever built, the MD-11. And no, there's no discussion about that. And I want you to really think about what is actually happening during departure with the energy you have available to you as a pilot. So as you probably know, when you calculate your takeoff power, you get what is usually known as a flex temperature, at least that's what we call it on the Airbus. And that flex temperature will limit the power output of the engines. Now this may sound uh, counterintuitive. You think that we really want all the power we have available to us, but that is not the case. We essentially want to have the minimum power available to safely get off the ground. Now this sounds a bit scary, but don't worry. First of all, there's a huge amount of extra margin included, and this also covers an engine failure on takeoff. So if you have a twin engine aircraft and you lose an engine, let's say at V1, you don't have to add any extra power. The flex temperature is calculated to cover that scenario. So why do we then reduce the power? Well, it has to do with noise, pollution, it has to do with fuel consumption and of course wear and tear on the engines. So the flex temperature gives you a power output and that is the energy you have available to get safely off the ground. So when we start the takeoff roll, initially all the power, all the energy we have is used for one thing and one thing only and that is to accelerate the aircraft down the runway. So if you look at this energy vector here, it's just pointing forward. That's all we do. We want to gain as much speed as fast as possible as we can. We do this until we reach the speed where we can rotate the aircraft off the ground. And once we do that, we pitch to a point where we are no longer accelerating. The aim has now completely changed. All we want to do is get as much altitude as fast as possible. Why is that? Well, it is because we want to gain as much altitude or as much distance between us and the ground as fast as we can. There are obstacles on the ground such as high buildings, power lines, then if you go a bit higher you have birds, you have VFR aircraft, balloons, kites, all sorts of things. And the further away you get from the ground, the less chance you have of hitting any of those things. And of course, if anything happens, like an engine failure, then altitude is your friend. The higher you are, the more time you have to react to those things. An engine failure at 35,000 feet is a completely different scenario to an engine failure at 500 feet. So we climb to what is considered a safe altitude. This safe altitude is something that is laid down either by the airport or by your company. We will discuss this more in the next video. Once you reach that safe altitude, you lower the nose. And this has two reasons. Well, first of all, we no longer want to just climb. We also want to start accelerating because then we can clean up 
the aircraft and in a clean configuration the aircraft is way more efficient. Another thing that happens and usually it happens at the same time but it doesn't always have to happen at the same time is that we reduce the thrust. Why do we do this? Because we are no longer on the ground, we have the gear up, the gear causes a huge amount of drag and also on the ground of course a lot of friction. Once that is up and we are climbing, we are at a safe altitude, we don't need all that power anymore. The aircraft is happy and gives you pretty much the same performance with a lot less power. So once again we want to reduce the noise, we want to reduce fuel consumption and engine wear and we reduce the power therefore and still have pretty much the same performance. So now the aim of the game is to climb and to accelerate at the same time. And we do this until we reach the maximum speed for our departure. If there are no restrictions, that's usually 250 knots below 10,000 feet, at which point we stop accelerating and all the energy we have available is once again used to gain altitude. And this game goes on, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this, until 10,000 feet, then again the vector will split and we use some of the energy we have to accelerate and some of the energy to climb until we have reached our cruising speed or our climb speed and then all the energy is once again used just for gaining more altitude. Let's briefly discuss the flap setting. I mean we've discussed this in other videos uh, already. So we can take off with flaps 1, 2 or 3. Flaps full is not allowed. Generally speaking this will be given to you by the performance software but there's a few things you need to bear in mind. So first of all if you take off with flaps 3 you're gonna have a very short takeoff run but the climb rate after takeoff is going to be quite shallow so you have a lot of drag. So this is really only a good idea if there's no obstacle at the end of the runway. So if you're in mountainous terrain you might want to think about this especially if you lose an engine with flaps 3 the aircraft is not gonna climb very well at all. Flaps 1 is the other extreme uh, you're gonna be on the runway for quite a while but then you have a very nice climb rate. So if the runway is long enough then this is usually our preferred flap setting. And flaps 2 is sort of the compromise in between. So these are considerations you should really bear in mind when you decide which flap setting you use for takeoff. Right, so a nice and short video today, but I do think energy management on takeoff is a topic that is rarely discussed, but it's actually quite important to have a picture in your head of what is actually happening with the energy you have available, especially if you lose an engine, if you're surrounded by high terrain, these things become very important. It may sound very basic, but it will build the foundation for the next video. Okay, and with that we have reached the end of this video. I hope you found it interesting, I hope you found it useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best, bye bye.